the 1920s, Americans were hit hard. The alcohol banning 18th Amendment was meant to keep Americans as dry as the Mojave Desert. The manufacture and sale of intoxicating beverages made it legal due to the American government wanting to stop the believed detrimental effects of alcohol, such as increasing crime, increase in childborn illness, and increase in social anarchy. This ban pushed Americans' hand, causing riots all over America. No expression, no expression. Hey, who gave you that giggle water? Or well, made it, but it's written the 18th Amendment that says you can't manufacture, sell, or drink alcohol. You know what? Just because you're a big cheese hey. doesn't mean you can take my hooch! You can't even tell I'm ossified! Doesn't matter. It's mine now. Yeah, he's big fat of cheese! Give me back my hooch! Hey, watch your kisser, I might pinch you. The next day. Hey, have you heard of the hooch hunter? I hear he's cracking down on the 18th Amendment everywhere. Yeah, I know. I've seen him a couple times. He's pouring out everyone's liquor whenever he sees them. He takes them and he just like stands there and just waits right there. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but he, uh, he produces the finest hooch in all of town. I'm paying him extra to fulfill my needs. I know, I can't take it anymore. The hooch, it's so good. I hear that Pop Marcus, he's the hooch hunter. Follow me. I'm going to show you the finest hooch supplier in all of town. Finest tree. This is the best batch yet. Remember, you don't know me. I have the hooch hunter on my tail. I can't go to prison. Yeah, you got it. You don't even know what this is. Horse feathers, Julian. Haven't you seen the studies? Our soon to be boy is going to be an idiot if you don't stop drinking that giggle water. Our dealer has the best giggle water in town, and Isabel, stop talking them horse feathers. Those studies are pure banana oil. Billy and Jonathan Barnes, if you take one more sip of that, we're done. Fine. I'm already a cake eater, so we are done. Well, fine. I don't need you anyway. Let's go, cake eater. I'll have the suppliers been here. Uh oh! Stop! Hold your dogs. Your effort was truly to cast me out. Well, you're a lousy cop. Well, too bad, because your time's over. Alcohol will live on! <laughs> Looks like the finest hooch dealer in town is finally done. Thanks, you Hunter. You saved my children from the evil that's alcohol. Hey guys, did you hear the news? The 21st Amendment was passed? Marcus, grab a bottle!
Life in the 1920s changed dramatically with the 18th Amendment, which stated that the manufacture, sale, and transportation of alcoholic beverages would now be illegal. This was ratified on January 16, 1919. The temperance movement, which was the driving force for prohibition, originated in colonial times. Problems like poverty and crime due to increasing urbanization and social change were sometimes thought to be caused by alcoholism. Even after the Revolutionary War, control over alcohol lessened. It wasn't later until later that people began to push for the banning of alcohol instead of moderation. Groups like the Anti-Saloon League and the Women's Christian Temperance Union pushed for this kind of reform as they believed that drinking caused corruption and many other problems. They also believed that it threatened public health. Crime, accidents, disease, dependency, and poverty would decrease. Following the 18th Amendment, the government planned to enforce prohibition with the passage of the Volstead Act. At first, drinking declined, but over time, people began to find ways to illegally drink. However, it was difficult to enforce the law as Prohibition Bureau in the Treasury Department created with the intention of stopping illegal drinking did not have enough staff or money. Saloons slash nightclubs illegally served alcohol and were hidden as to avoid being caught. Oftentimes, speakeasies required passwords or cards to enter. People also illegally obtained alcohol from smugglers, referred to as bootleggers at this time. This liquor was often smuggled from other countries and on ships. Despite the law's intention, prohibition eventually led to lawlessness and organized crime business involved in illegal activities. Individuals rose from the streets and built their own criminal empire. One of these individuals was Al Capone. Al Capone, who made up to $60 million a year, worked in Chicago. As one of the most famous bootleggers, he used violence and gang killings to control liquor in the city. He smuggled whiskey across the Canadian border and controlled speakeasies. Support of prohibition sat below 20% in the mid-1920s. While intended to solve a variety of problems, people began it to believe that it ended up causing many new ones. Repeal organizations received more support, and as the U.S. sank into the Great Depression, people began to call for the 18th Amendment to be repealed. This amendment repealed the 18th Amendment, ending the 14-year Prohibition era in the United States. However, after this, states were allowed to make their own Prohibition laws. Overall, the prohibition of alcohol was controversial. Many believed that drinking should be a personal decision without the interference of government. Others thought the 18th Amendment would protect and benefit overall public health. While it aimed to solve many social issues, prohibition eventually created a higher demand for alcohol and problems like lawlessness and organized crime, which can still be seen in our world today.